Welcome. I'm here, Jane Mountrose, with my special guest, Debbie Ann Goldberg. And I'm excited to announce for Sofa Living, today's strategy is return to love. And I'm so excited. It's obviously, <laughs> you can see hearts all around both of our rooms. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, a subject that we both really resonate with. Um, and let me tell you a little bit first about us and about Deb. Uh, Soulful Living provides timely keys and solutions for open-minded people who want to create more joyful, meaningful, and prosperous lives. With three decades of experience in the fields of holistic life coaching and healing, my husband, Philip, and I also are published authors, trainers, coaches, and founding directors of IHP, the International Association of Holistic Practitioners. IHP is part of Awakenings Institute, a nonprofit organization dedicated to creating a more loving world where the unique gifts that each individual brings are honored and nurtured. Each Sunday, we discuss a single spiritually focused strategy for living more soulfully. As mentioned, today's strategy is return to love. We hope you can join us often and start your week off right with fresh ideas you can use more soulfully. So um, I'm also pleased, so pleased <laughs> to tell you a little bit more about Debbie Goldberg. Uh, Deb is a retired therapist who practiced 18 years providing treatments for mental health and substance abuse. She's worked in a variety of settings and is now in private practice as a divine therapist and spiritual teacher. Debbie was spiritually awakened by Jesus and taught God's universal divine love and wisdom. These conversations transformed her life and set her on a course of self-discovery through divine introspection with God. She believes that you can heal or understand your true identity without the love and truth that comes comes from a one-on-one -on -one with a with it I would think it would be with the love and truth that comes from a one-on-one -on -one intimate relationship with God. This ultimately leads you to your divine calling. Debbie's authority is connecting people to the divine relationship of oneness within as it ends the faulty belief of separation from God that creates pain and suffering. As a part of fulfilling her purpose, uh, Deb has written a number of books, <laughs> including two three volume book series is called Creating a Life Worth Living First Edition for the Spiritual Beginning and a Divinely Ordered Life Second Edition for the More Advanced Seeker. And there's a lot more. Uh, Deb was a video podcast host on Angel Heart Radio and on Enlightened World Network. She's been involved with programming for Enlightened World Network and participated in several live video broadcasts. Um, I also wanted to start our conversation with a quote, I, a message actually that I just noticed on Deb's page on Facebook that I think is a nice introduction to her and, and to the topic that we're going to talk, today, talk about today. So here it is, this is a quote from Deb. You've been blessed with a heart to love fully, talents and gifts. You're guided with tender, loving care and direction. You are a miracle and filled with enormous power that resides in your heart. Your spiritual journey is about learning these things about yourself and embracing them. You have a beautiful light and are affecting the whole, uh, the whole every step of the way. However, once you have accomplished stepping into your God-given wholeness, you then express the love and talents you have been given, gracing others in your own unique way. So they wake up, open their hearts, feel divine love and get started on their own journey. We are here, we are, we are the answers to God's prayers. I thought that was so beautiful. So Deb, welcome. And um, I'd like it, if you would like to start by just sharing a little bit more maybe about yourself and about about the tip, which actually comes from Deb, return to love and why that's important to you. Thank you so much for having me here again, Jane. I love spending time with you. Uh, as you said, we're, we're both like-minded in the way that we feel about uh, returning back to love to your heart. Uh, 
a little bit about me is uh, I, I, like my bio said, I was awoken in 2014 by Jesus during a meditation. And um, basically what that awakening was all about is returning to love, returning home. Uh, with me not having any awareness that there was a whole spiritual world out there. That, <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, I was completely confused, uh, lost in the abyss of earth and uh, not understanding what, uh, what divine love really was. So uh, that whole awakening with me was teaching me what divine love is mm -hmm. and that we're all here to uh, remember what that is to return home. And when you start to understand who you are and how much you're loved, it completely changes your life. It changed mine and it changes everybody that I've spoken to that has gone through some kind of their own similar uh, awakening. It creates a lot of peace inside of you. All the things that actually all of us hope for <laughs> right <laughs> that, that we don't realize are really kind of right at our fingertips and it's within ourselves um that we keep looking at outside of ourselves to be fulfilled um with love and peace and joy when actually it's our natural state right right and that's what we don't realize it took me a while actually to fully grasp that that actually it's the separation from God and the separation from love, divine love, and, and from the truth of who we are, that is the illusion. The thing that we think is most real, <laughs> that this is, you know, this kind of this physical reality is most of what there is here. That's mm -hmm. the illusion. Mm -hmm. And, and it, it just all of a sudden really struck me that it is, you know, it's, it's just, because we think we're separate mm -hmm. that we, we we aren't actually i can't even say we because we think we're separate we are mm -hmm. in a way where you think we're separate so we are in our own minds but there never is the separation is never there the potential to be connected with our source and however you want to understand it to be connected to god and to the truth of who we are which is really, I think, the essence of the journey, understanding who we are. It's, it's all, it's right here. It's always here. <laughs> it is always right here, but we keep missing it. It keeps missing <laughs> us. It's like it's so crazy. It is. It is a. It feels like a crazy experience when you find out the truth of who you are, and then uh, you know your mind plays games with you, which we call ego and keeps moving you like in a trance state just keeps moving you out of understanding that you are the presence of god and there's no separation mm -hmm. well, everything in this world teaches us separation our body teaches us separation uh and even when like you said it you know it takes a long time to integrate actually the the word is believe because it comes down to believing and knowing truth and no matter where your mind tries to take you that you keep coming back to that truth mm -hmm. right right and that that's the i think the challenge i i've told the story here and there about kind of how my awakening has evolved over the years and and i i started having a connection with a with guidance that i actually relied on for many years <laughs> it was just a <laughs> I had a name for my guide and asked questions and received responses. And then um, at a certain point, my guide wasn't there anymore and, and someone else was there. And there were a couple different little phases to that, but in a very short time, it was God who was there. And that was hard for me to accept. It was hard for me to accept, I think, because of my limited perspective on myself. And I think that that really is the essence of the of the challenge for us is to understand that 
there if there is no separation between us and our creator then we all have that connection mm -hmm. however we want to express it or to connect with it but it is it in the, in itself it's very simple it's we're the ones who make it complicated <laughs> We do, but you, I love that story that I love your story of how that connection occurred um, and and how for many people, you know, we're, we're, we're using the term God for divine love. Uh, you can call it whatever you want because divine love answers to whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right for me it for me it's god it's our creator it's the the it, it is the creator of all creation and we're part of that creation uh we are the essence and presence of god um getting that in your mind well first of all trying to understand that is difficult <laughs> even though you're learning all of this truth it's difficult and then you're constantly challenged during each day that pulls you away from that thinking to make you feel separate again, to make you think that you're just this body or and and the person, this person who you think you are. Right. And and it and it can be a real struggle. Um but that's that's what this show is called, is return to love, because one of the messages that I, you know, I get frustrated with that. I get frustrated when I move out of presence and I move back into some random thought process that's not true. And I keep asking God, can you, can you please just keep me here? <laughs> <laughs> so I stop drifting away. I get frustrated that I keep drifting away. And all I hear is, all you have to do is just return home. You just need to come back and come back and come back, you, you know, whether it's a thousand times a day, you catch yourself, just keep coming back because you're coming back to the truth. You're coming back home um, to the home that you've never left, but feel like you have. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. I think one thing that has helped me understanding the nature of love is, and these are <laughs> these things I don't know it, it it takes me a while I guess to understand things but it was just a few years ago I decided well I've never really thought about it but how would I define love and it's interesting if you ask yourself that question because it to me when I asked it then it was to me it was connectedness love is connectedness when we love someone or something, we feel fully connected. There is no reservation about there being separation between us. Mm -hmm. Like if you love a dog or something, you just hug them, you love them, you know, you're connected. Mm -hmm. And a, a child or each other, you know, I just, you and me, I mean, we could love each other and I think we do. Mm -hmm. And it just, without reservation, um, then then we are connected and, and the same is true for our relationship with you could say also uh, with the soul we have a soul <laughs> and it's the same thing if you're in that state of a loving state of connectedness then you have that connectedness with your soul and and with your source so it, it is it's to me i think over the years and especially now it it has become very simple mm -hmm. You know, just like, and, and we actually, Deb and I, we were talking before we started about how we focus on love. And you can see probably in both of our environments, there's a lot of suggestions of love around us. <laughs> and I, you know, we wear it in, we wear it in jewelry. We, you know, it's just something where it becomes second nature to, to relate to things from that perspective. And I think it is, I think it is good to wear hearts personally because it, it 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 bears that energy of connectedness mm -hmm. so I, lo I love the description of connectedness um I, th I think that's such a beautiful descriptive word of what it feels like i think what 
I ask God today, what, it, what is most important to you? What is the point that's most important to you that comes across? And what I heard was, is how much people are loved, that they're loved beyond anything you could ever imagine because the love does not feel like anything that you feel here. Like you could feel so filled with love here, but the love you feel when you are connected to your own source, to your own being, to the presence of love, it, it's overwhelming. For me, it's overwhelming. For me, it is peace. It is joy. It's more of a state of mind, a state of being than a feeling. Mm -hmm. it, it just, you, it, you just resonate love and peace. Uh, and then faith comes along with that. And all of these other things, joy, that it, it is a it is a way of being and you know i don't think any of us are expected to stay in that state 24 7. i think it's really difficult to even think that we can do that um however that is who we are and the connectedness within uh, with yourself with you're connected to god you're connected to yourself because mm -hmm. there is it's only one. These are these are difficult concepts that <laughs> you know that still if I try to fit it into something I know in my human brain, it just it doesn't even come close to what the feeling the of state of being is of being in that love. Mm -hmm. Right. No, yeah. yeah, it it, it <laughs> it's a fascinating area. But if you if you explore human potential, mm -hmm. right, there's also there's a from Star Trek, I guess it's like, you know, the journey into the next territory. I think the next territory is within, uh -huh. you know, I think it this is it. That's what we're talking about. And something interesting I found, too, is uh, being a person who focuses on healing, who teaches healing and has been really focused on it for decades, um, spiritual energy which to me is love, but the energy of love, the energy of connectedness is the most powerful energy you can access for healing anything. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so we're, we're not talking about, it is actually, some people would say, you know, then you're kind of out there like it's very airy fairy. This is not that. Actually, this is about the most practical thing I think that you could focus on to me when mm -hmm. you realize that if you can bring spirit fully into form that's the best way to live you know it's not just up here it's actually bringing it down through yourself into your life into your reality and and in the end uh, if you want to create a better world into the world to help to shift the you know the all of the hatred and fear and separation that are holding us back wow you know, I don't think I, all of that is so important what you're saying, Jane. Um, what, what I found is, is to take that information in, in, in and know what, know things, what divine love is, because you, you learn all of this, this information, this knowledge, but to sit and feel it is quite another thing. And when you're feeling yourself, divine love, um, God, it makes you want to keep going back. That's what makes you keep wanting going back because you get a taste of it. It's, it's sort of like a drug. Uh, <laughs> you, know, you get an addiction to something. It's addicted to, to love, addict, addicted to the, the feeling the sensation, the beingness of that, of that presence. Nothing else feels like that. Mm -hmm. Right. But it, it's very practical, really. Mm -hmm. You know, it's actually when you're in that kind of a place, you're in your most resourceful state actually for making the kinds of decisions that you need to make with your life. If you're in fear, <laughs> and you're coming from fear or anger or frustration, 
I think most of us can, if you really think about it, understand that that's not the best place to be if you want to be resourceful and creative. When you're in a very expansive, <laughs> like anything is possible and everything is connected kind of a place, then much more is possible. And it really is, uh, I think, if you look at return to love as a tip, it's a process and it, it's not, I never look at it as an expectation. I don't measure how many minutes a day I'm connected versus separate, but I do know that I do know what the, where I want to be mm -hmm. to live my life. And I think that's what you're saying too, is that, you know, when you get there, it's like, you know, <laughs> you know, this is where I want to be. And, and something I would say, if we're talking about this as a, as a practical tip is an easy thing to do anytime, any time of the day, any, you know, anything, anytime, anything might be help happening um, is to just pause for a moment and step back from, from kind of that momentum. Cause we're in people in general are usually in a momentum. Like we're not in the present moment, right? We're kind of thinking, well, this is happening and that's happening, or I, sh I wish that was happening that happened before, you know, it's like we're anywhere except for in this moment where we are now. And it's really the simplicity of that, that we want. And what I found is the easiest thing to do is to pause for a moment and just take a few nice breaths. It's actually amazing how much you can change your state just by taking a few breaths mm -hmm. and then focus on breathing love into your heart. You know, tap, also the thymus gland is right here. You can tap there. Mm -hmm. That activates, it's your life energy is in the thymus gland. You can tap on it and just hold your hand. I've noticed also when I do yeah. processes a lot of times with people and they get to that place of connectedness and they just have their hands on their hearts and they, you know, they feel the truth in their hearts, which is what, what we really want. So my suggestion is make it simple, you know, find something simple you can do that would bring you more to that place and don't judge yourself for what else was happening because mm -hmm. we're human. Exactly. I, I so agree. Um, for me, uh, yes, holding your heart, putting your hand on your heart does bring you back your breath. What I, what I notice also is my feeling, my feelings. If I'm not feeling loving or I'm feeling otherwise, that's a, that's a tip for me. What's going on with me that I'm feeling other than the peace that I know I should be feeling right now or could be feeling right now. Mm -hmm. right. Uh, so my feelings are always a barometer of what I, something to connect with and saying, what's happening here with me? Why, why did I just walk into another room in my head <laughs> <laughs> I just went into another room. Which room did I go into right now? Which story is in that room that created this uh, feeling of um, not being peaceful? And every time um, I've talked to God about, I don't like walking into another room. <laughs> I just want to stay here. Uh, he tells me it's okay. Like you said, don't judge yourself for it. No. Just just keep coming back. Coming back. Right. right. Yeah. And it and it gradually it, it increases, I think. That's my experience. I there's a um something that was taught in the in the 191900s about um how you can change and there are four stages to change. The first one being unconscious incompetence. Have you heard this before? I don't think so. Oh, the first one is unconscious incompetence. It's like knowing, not knowing what you don't know. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> and that's, you know, so many people are just living fairly unconsciously. Mm -hmm. They don't really know why they're doing most of the things they're doing most of the time. Mm -hmm. You know, that's where they are. So then you you decide, well, actually, I, I don't want to be in this place. You know, what I'd like to do is I'd like to be in this more peaceful, loving place or whatever it is. I'd like to have less stress. And this actually is, this is a great way to re release stress. You can't be in stress 
chronic, you know, stress and in the loving place at the same time. So then you are in a place of conscious incompetence, like you consciously know that's what you want, but you're still not able to do it. You may not even have any idea how to do it. So you research and you find out information, you gain knowledge. And this is another really important point, I think, is that knowledge is not the end solution to things. Like a lot, you might say, well, I've heard that before. Well, of course you've heard that before. <laughs> you know, it's not like we haven't invented these ideas, although they came to us, you know, from our own, in our own ways. Um, but it is, a lot of people think once they know something, like you read a book, you might read a book on stress reduction, and you think, well, I've read, you know, I've already been there, I've done that, you know. <laughs> uh -huh. But what you need to do is start to apply it with a simple technique, whatever it is, like Deb suggested, just to remind yourself why I want to return here and whether you want to start breathing or just look at hearts or whatever you want to do to, to take that step. Um, then you become conscious, you go consciously incompetent, then you become consciously competent. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, I know now if I breathe and relax and just breathe loving energy and just let go, you know, whatever's happening that doesn't matter, then I'm going to feel better. Mm -hmm. So that's conscious competence. And if you practice that over time, you're both new neural pathways in your brain because we're in this, con this, you know, in this whatever it is that we're usually, the road we're usually traveling that we don't want to, we want to build this new one and then you get to a point where you're unconsciously competent, conscious, unconscious competence. So in other words, where it just becomes natural, mm -hmm. it's like much more that way. And I'm sure you feel that you're much more naturally that way than you were before. Mm -hmm. And as the more that we focus on that and build the strength in that area, the more unconsciously competent we are. So you, you might wonder, why are some people luckier than others? You know, like that person, everything works out for them. Nothing ever, nothing ever works out for me. You know, that's a belief. Mm -hmm. And you, if you keep saying it, then you're on that road. Mm -hmm. If you say, well, I can connect with divine love. And I know, I know that I know how, mm -hmm. you know, you travel that road. So I, I think that's very interesting. And Philip and I, we, we describe it as the difference between knowledge and being, mm -hmm. like knowing the words or being the words. And mm -hmm. we, we, what we want to do and the reason to practice and the reason for soulful living, too, is to learn to be the words. Yeah, it is. I love that four step process of going. And, and I know that's where I started. I when Jesus woke me up, I, I had no clue. <laughs> I had no clue I was unconscious and incompetent. <laughs> knowing, and knowing how to be competent spiritually and consciously. So it, it is a it is a process. Mm -hmm. And and you know, I had so much knowledge poured into me. You're talking about the knowledge and the being. I had so much knowledge poured into me. I didn't even understand most of the stuff that he was teaching me. <laughs> it was just, you know way o over my head and you know when I and I wrote what he asked me with the the messages he gave me in my books and and even after writing the books I didn't understand <laughs> that I wrote and and so I, I had to grow into it and right. it is, that's it, what happens right yeah that's that's the process exactly the way you're describing it is you the knowledge then becomes your being of of experiencing it mm -hmm. experiencing all these different levels of awareness that you didn't have before and knowing that you're not alone so whatever whatever is happening in your life and i think that you know this this time in our history being called home and remembering to go home is, is really important. I think each person that's part of our destiny is we are being called home. We're saying, hey, remember who you are. 
you've never left home. This is, this is your real home is within you and your heart. That's where all this connection takes place. And it is so important to step up to the plate, I think, and really, you know, we work so hard to learn other things, you know, right. to, to read things, to try different activities, hobbies, whatever it is, you know, to we set goals for ourselves. But returning home is the most important thing that you could ever do. Because it it gives you everything that you're looking for, because you realize you are everything that you're looking for. Your wholeness has already been established. And, and a lot of us are looking to be whole or to be more because we don't understand who we are. I, I started to think about, um, you know, John the Baptist is one of, one of the spirits I hear from, <laughs> which I know is all God, but um, comes to me in John the Baptist as form and uh, and I started thinking about his, you know, when I hear about Christianity, uh, to repent, that that was something that was said a lot back in his day, uh, <laughs> and is to repent. And I thought, repent really means if you if you take it to a higher level of understanding, means return home. It doesn't mean stop sinning. It means return home. Come back home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that really makes sense. Our interpretation of things like, you know, those kinds of biblical references or mm -hmm. different things a lot of times I think is has led us astray <laughs> because we if we evaluate things from that very 3D perspective, we're not going to really grasp the significance of it. That's really interesting. Mm -mm. Yeah. yeah. Well, as soon as I started hearing that, because you know, I'm not Christian, I'm Jewish, even though I'm not uh, religious in any, in any way, um, cultural Jew. Uh, but when I, when I hear these things or see them, I, I'm, it just right away, I'm like, no, repent means go home. Come home. Come back yeah. to who you are. Come back to the, your natural state. Come back to your creator. You are creation. Yeah. And it is really the, the transformation of our perspective on who we are, I think is, you know, that when you really look at it, that's the whole, that's the whole of the spiritual journey mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. understanding who, who we are. And it is our limited perspectives on our potential that often hold us back. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not good enough or I'm not, you know, I don't know enough or whatever it is. I'm not tall enough or I'm too old or, you know, just all these really <laughs> silly things that we tell ourselves. I'm inadequate. I'm undeserving. You know, or I, I, I don't have that connection somehow. Mm -hmm. But that state of connectedness, you know, it is that it, it's there for all of us. Always. And uh, it's interesting, years ago, my husband, Philip, and I, we spent actually years trying to figure out how to connect with guidance. This was back in the 1980s, you know, <laughs> and there, it wasn't easy to find out. But we had a lot of, we took a lot of different classes and, and studied different things, but they were all kind of obscure, you know, like you have to do these different kind of meditations and you know, they were really complicated and then you had to be very present and, you know, do all these different things. And, and really it's just connect with the love in your heart. Mm -hmm. It's, it's so simple. And, and I think the thing that I think is the most amazing is it's all built right into us. Mm -hmm. You know, that our whole journey is built into us, everything about us physically and energetically, you know, with the energy field, everything is significant and it all, we're building, we're kind of building it. It's like we're, we're a construction project, <laughs> energetically, you know, shifting, shifting from that place of limitation to a place of connectedness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, beautifully said. It, it is, once you awaken and you realize these, uh, that who you are, 
um, because you've connected with divine love. It is like a deconstruction process, really, mm-hmm. because we've constructed ourselves to be who we think we are based on all our experiences, right? right. And, and who and, we're told we are. <laughs> yeah, who we're told we are, what the world tells us we are and who we, should, right. we need to be um, and how we need to be it. And once you, once you awaken, it's a complete deconstruction of you uh, is, is getting rid of all of these concepts that we bought into what I, I say, we drank the Kool-Aid. Yeah. <laughs> we believed all of these crazy things about ourselves. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, it's, it's a process that just takes time. So I want to, I want to make it clear that even though I know these things, even though I feel, I know what my being is, I know I am the presence of love and that everyone else is. And so is everything in this world. Uh, it doesn't mean that I don't have a bad day. It doesn't mean that I don't constantly have to be um, shifting myself back and back to home again, because the stories just energetically play over and over and over again. And you just get better and better at catching them and not feeding into them. Mm-hmm. And right. then when, yeah, and then when you do, you just be really loving with yourself and you say, okay, we, we'll just start over again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And just, you can actually start noticing that you're, you have a part of you that's observing what's really what you're doing mm-hmm. and you may not even fully believe it, but you, you know, it's just playing out, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting. Sometimes um, I'm an emotional person and I, I'm generally, well, I'm generally pretty happy and you know, Mm -hmm. things I'm, and loving, I think, and um, there are times, though, when something will hook, hook me, (laughs) you know, that will get me, and I can, well, we were talking about it the other day, actually, writing books, like, toward Mm -hmm. the end of writing a book, Mm -hmm. I just, it just drives me crazy, you know, (laughs) just uh, all the details and stuff, and, and, and it, I think something that I find very amusing is, you know, I'll get into these states like, oh, I just can't stand this anymore. And, and Philip, he's so used to it. He'll just be looking at me and say like, oh, yeah, okay. You know, it's kind of like, I can tell he's not even buying into it. And then I see him not buying into it. And I, I, I part of me stops buying into it too. Like, look at her, uh-huh. <laughs> this silly person, <laughs> all upset over a few words here. Uh-huh. Yeah, but we do it. Right. And it's okay. You know, it's okay to, you know, if that's what's happening, that's what's happening. And then you want to return, you know, to, to wholeness. But the first thing also is to observe it and notice how, in a way, kind of funny it is a lot of times. It's comical. It is very comical. I actually say that, you know, we're, we are so hypocritical because there's two faces all the time because you're constantly getting pulled out of your piece. And here comes this other part of you that, you know, starts creating drama when there is no drama. And, and so. But that's all that knows how to do anyhow. Yeah. So it seems like, you know, you could look at it and it's, it's really hypocrisy. And, and, and if you can laugh at it, when mm-hmm. you can laugh at yourself yeah. um, and have more humor, which was one of my big lessons. I didn't know how to laugh. I, I everything was so serious and mm-hmm. I kept take hearing, things lightly. <laughs> yeah. Take it lightly. Uh, laugh at yourself, laugh at everything because um, it doesn't have to be serious. Whatever yeah. you think is serious, it's not. Yeah. yeah and it doesn't, you don't have to judge yourself either. Just kind of enjoy understanding more about what's happening and, Mm -hmm. and let it go. You know, it is, it is, if, if you're looking, I think we're looking also many people talk about um, ascension and dimensional shifts. And if we're looking at a dimensional shift, it is a shift from fear to love. So those are two different realities. And within those realities, actually existence is also very different. So um, I think it helps just to be aware of that and, and to see where you are, 
you know, just observe. I think start noticing and start mm -hmm. noticing what catches you. And um, again, you know, when you think about it, breathe and focus on the love in your heart. Tap, <laughs> tap on your thymus, whatever, you know, <laughs> whatever does it for you. Mm -hmm. um, being out in nature is mm -hmm. wonderful too. Just connected, physically connected with the oneness of nature. Mm -hmm. It evokes that kind of uh, unawareness. So it is, I think, above all for this, this program and, and my work in general, I want everything to be practical for people. Mm -hmm. You know, these are very lofty ideas, but they also are very practical. Mm -hmm. and, that, and in fact, uh, on the most practical level, if you can be in a happier, joyful, lighter, loving state, it's great for your health. Mm -hmm. And stress is a killer. If you start, if you don't know that and read a little bit about it, it's associated with almost every chronic disease imaginable. Mm -hmm. And and it also can even be fatal. So, and it's no fun. <laughs> it's kind of like, why am I doing this? Yes. <laughs> Not fun. Not fun. Right. I've, been there. I've been there. You know, yeah. it's really so um, easy to get caught up in the cycle of life. Sometimes you feel like a, uh, you know, a hamster on a wheel. And, and the more that you have stress in your life or perceive things as stress, make things as stress. Um, and it's really, it's a viewpoint and a lot of it comes, it's all choices. Uh, so I went through, I went through a, probably all my life I've had stress and then it got worse um, before I was awakened. And you know, when you're under such levels of stress, you're releasing a lot of cortisol in your right. body. And, um, and that is what we point as the problem that creates all these chronic diseases inside of ourself is, is this release of adrenaline and cortisol that is not supposed to be, that's supposed to happen when you're in a trauma moment, but most of right. us are not in enduring trauma moments, most days of our lives. Uh, but yeah, being caught up in that, uh, that stress, uh, the daily stress of how to live life um, and the way that you're perceiving it, and that all comes from really not being connected to love, not being connected to divine love. Because the more you do that, the more you start to understand who you are. And you don't know who you are if you keep living in a, um, a daily um, stress wheel. Right. You don't, you don't have to live like that. No. Yeah, it doesn't yeah, have I found actually when when I learned the process that we use, we call soul centering for connecting with a love in your heart. Very simple, you know, <laughs> and just breathing and and connecting with that love. It changed my life almost instantaneously. Mm -hmm. I was in, I was under a lot of stress. I was an architect, unhappy with what I was doing. I didn't want to get up in the morning. Once I started when I started doing that, I started practicing it in the morning and um, within a week or, you know, very short time, I started getting really excited about getting up in the morning and realizing I had more choices than I thought. And, and like you said, it's a journey, mm -hmm. these things, everything takes time, but, but I think you can, there can be those kinds of shifts that really, my life hasn't ever gone back where it was before since then. Mm -hmm. I still, I can't wait to get up in the morning. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like life. <laughs> you think of, of, young children it's like oh it's morning i'm up <laughs> you know i'm here <laughs> yeah yeah it is it's wonderful and and it's interesting because you know i just had my fourth grandchild and and i look at her and it's just pure joy pure joy and i think this is who each one of us are and we forgot right because none of, none of us have changed. We're, we're just have matured into an adult from a baby. But I look at her as the breath of God, complete love um, and whole. 
And that is exactly who each one of us are. So when you look into a baby's face, you just know you're looking into your own self, the, the yeah. joy of just yeah. being, right? <laughs> so find a picture of a baby. It works really well. <laughs> yeah, you have, um, for anybody who doesn't know, that Deb has some really adorable ones on her website. I, keep, <laughs> I saw another one today, I think. Just, they're so beautiful. <laughs> They are a treasure, and I shared them not because I, you know, I think she's just awesome and beautiful, of course, because she's my grandchild. But the pleasure that you get from just seeing right. uh, these pictures is amazing. I've even had people I don't know share them. On <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> oh. oh. Because and it, it is, that's the thing, this, this, these things that we're talking about, they aren't actually difficult, but they are specific. So if, if looking at a picture of a baby makes you feel happy, and another thing is happiness and love go together. Mm -hmm. So if you can find things that even just make you feel a little happier, then you're closer to love. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, we, we have a couple short books we've written on love and happiness. And we, one of them is doses of love and happiness. Find ways you can feel more love and happiness during the day. Yeah. And if looking at a picture of a baby does it, then that's great. Mm -hmm. I mean, it works for me. <laughs> it works for me. <laughs> just little dogs. We have a couple of little dogs that really make us happy. Mm -hmm. And you can start writing a list of things that make you feel happy. And, and do those. Mm -hmm. You know, some simple things, you know, have things that make you happy around you. We, Deb and I were sharing all of our little treasures before we started. Like, mm -hmm. I have this beautiful heart. Mm -hmm. It's from Amazon, actually. A beautiful, it's selenite, S-E-L-E-N-I-T-E. -E. Mm -hmm. And it's a very, actually a very high, um, high vibration stone. And you can see it's really, <laughs> it's just fascinating to look at it. Uh -huh. And, you know, I look at it, it makes me happy. So I have things like that around me. Mm -hmm. That's such a, it's such a great advice because it is, you know, at times, you know, when you get pulled out of your head, like I said, into this room and down a hallway that has rooms in it <laughs> and you're not sure which one you're going into at the moment, um, to have things around you that pull you out of, of your head because getting stuck in your head is what creates all of those issues and so have having things to remind you um and you know even physically you know when you're in one of those places you're so in your head that if you just actually touch things around you touch the furniture mm -hmm. um, um ask for a hug any of those things, are good. <laughs> really good. It really brings you back. It brings you back to present because you're touching something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, that's beautiful. I feel good. <laughs> <laughs> I feel good too. <laughs> So any, any final points before we close? Feels like we've covered it. I think so. I, I think, you know, being quiet helps you connect to your heart. Your breath helps you connect to your heart. Feel the love that is within your own self, in your own heart, because it's one with, divine love with your creator and it's there for you all the time it is who you are that you keep forgetting uh and, and it's free and it's free <laughs> <laughs> it's just remembering to do it. <laughs> yeah and uh you know i was given this mantra well a few of them the other day but i, I really like this one it's a affirmation or a mantra whatever you want to call it and i really like it 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 is i am the presence of god in this world 
I see no reason to see me in any other way. Mm, that's beautiful. Thank you. Or anyone else. Well, thank you so much, Deb. That was really, it was fun and very energizing. And that's another way you can tell you're on the right track if it, if it brings energy. <laughs> um, and I wanted you to know, too, if you want to know more about Deb, she has a beautiful website at debbiegoldberg.com, Debbie N. Goldberg, D-E-B-B-I-E-N-G-O-L-D-B-E-R-G.com. Um, you can find her books on Amazon. And um, what else would you like people to know that, that want to know more about you? Um, you can find me on Facebook. Uh, and uh, if you're interested in learning more, working with me, uh, you can uh, private message me. Or you, through my website, you can contact me as well. And... Uh, my goal for this fall and winter is to work on the rest of my books <laughs> so that I could be bringing you more uh, beautiful messages, uh, divine messages to help uplift you and help remember who you are. Yes, and, and that, that is true. I, I really enjoy reading your messages on, on Facebook too, so. Thank you. thank you. And thank you so much, Deb, for being with us. This has been really loving. <laughs> very, very beautiful. It is. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. I've enjoyed every minute. So I just want to, in closing, say to remember the, the keys and strategies we share on this show, the ultimate goal is to put them to use, <laughs> as we've suggested, to create a more joyful, soulful, and fulfilling life. And if you enjoyed the show as much as we did, we hope you'll join us next week and invite some of your friends. It's really, it's also more fun and probably more likely that you'll follow through if you choose to make these kinds of soulful changes with some of your friends. So we highly recommend that. And as you add more of these soulful strategies to your daily routine, your life really can change in miraculous ways. I think it has for both of us. And remember, and this is an affirmation actually you can use too, is return to love. So mm -hmm. that could be something you can write on sticky notes and just put around your house on your refrigerator or whatever um, and remind yourself. It's something you can also consciously <laughs> integrate into your memory bank so, so it comes up for you. And if you want to know more, you can find out about our courses for Awakenings Institute courses, books, and other offerings on our extensive websites at gettingthrough.org, which is gettingthru.org forward slash holistic. And we also want you to know that we and our guests value your support. Um, you know how to reach Deb. And for Awakenings Institute, we also want you to know that tuition for our courses and other purchases support our mission of helping to create a more loving world. And if you can share the message of love with those around you together, I believe we can change the world. So thanks again, Deb. And for everyone out there, have a wonderful week. God bless. Bye-bye.